Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head to Norway once again. We're going to revisit one of my favourite Norwegian breweries. So today we're going to Drammen, which is home to Hamburg area. And this is my fourth review from these guys. So today we're having a little look at their Akavit Porter, which comes in at 7% ABV. This guy got a 99 overall on rate beer, 94 within the style. And um, it's an Imperial Porter, as you might have guessed. But of course, the quirkiest thing about this beer is the fact that it's been aged in Akavit barrels. So if you don't know what Akavit is, it's a spirit drink that you get here in Scandinavia. It always has to be over 37.5% to be called Akavit. Of course, in Swedish and Danish it's called Akvavit, but in Norwegian, as you can see, the spelling is a little bit different Akavit. And I think the Icelandics actually do have a different spelling of it as well, but usually it's distilled from grains or from potatoes as well, and it's a sort of herbal, kind of spicy flavoured thing. They usually flavour it with the likes of cardamom, fennel, aniseed, but you can also get ones that are flavoured with orange peel and lemon peel and uh, and things like that as well. So it's quite an interesting spirit drink, that one. I've had it once or twice, but it has KO'd me each time I've had it, just because I'm not used to it. I don't really drink vodka or things like that anymore, so it is a little bit of a, a beast if you do try that, but it's something, I guess, I do need to embrace a little bit more since I'm living here in Scandinavia. But this one, it should be a really quirky beer. This is what you want as a beer reviewer. You do want to review beers that have some a little bit different to them you know over a thousand videos now and we're still finding quirky beers which is the, the beauty of the craft beer scene of course but yeah this one should be a really good beer this is my fourth review from Han Brigeria like I said and um, you know we know they produce some really awesome beers so I'm definitely looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it as well but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews I've done from Hanbrig area before. This is my fourth review, like I said, and no doubt I will add some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do subscribe to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed for you before. And uh, as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys. You've always got some awesome suggestions, so don't hesitate to get in touch through the Facebook, Twitter, or Untapped. And the support that you give the channel is obviously hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Hanbrig area then. So as I mentioned to you before, this brewery is from the town of Dramen, to the southwest of Oslo, and it's located in Buskerud County, and the population of the city is around 63,000. So the city actually started off as three separate seaport towns, which were eventually merged together to form Dramen in the year 1811. And the unique location of the town is actually made a big centre for kind of timber and also for shipbuilding as well. So it's a very kind of... Uh, I guess working class town you would say it's there's a lot of tradesmen and things there as far as I'm aware but this brewery was founded back in 2005 by Jens Marvel, Rune Eriksson, Arne Eide and also Egil Hilde so their original premises was actually an old textile factory which was built back in 1874 in a housing estate not far from the Oss brewery but they've now moved into another building in the train yard of course and it's a really nice building actually if you have a look at the brewery website in the description below you will see some nice photographs of that and they've done it up really quite beautifully actually but the brew kit was bought from England and it has about a 900 litre capacity per batch in 2006 their production was 40,000 litres but by 2012 they'd actually expanded this to 350,000 litres by using four new by using a new 1800 litre brewing apparatus so they are constantly expanding I think those figures may be a little bit out of date at the moment because they are a brewery that are uh, expanding quite rapidly actually you can get these beers all across the world I've actually seen them in Australia the Norwegian wood that I reviewed for you a few years ago I actually found that one in Australia but like I say their beers are available in quite a few different countries actually they're quite widely they're quite widely available domestically as well and the company also import a number of different beers to Norway as well as part of their distribution business one of the other things about this brewery is that in 2016 two of their founders actually decided to uh, to retire so the brewery has now gone into an ownership partnership with Ausman Bregery and also with Hufel Bregery who if I remember rightly are from Berrien a little bit further to the north but as we know there's some really really good beers produced in Norway these guys have quite an extensive range of things if you go and check out their website you can see all the different ones the ones I've reviewed for you so far I think I reviewed the Odin's Tipple which was an imperial stout that one was really nice I also had the Belgisk IPA which was a really really good beer one of the best Belgian IPAs I've reviewed actually but the most quirky beer I've found from these guys so far was probably the Norwegian Wood which was this 
Norwegian farmhouse. It was a little bit smoked. It had some saison quality to it. It also had some kind of elderflower things going on with it as well. That was a really, really damn good beer. And that's probably the most unique beer I found from these guys, actually. But you can rest assured, if you try any of their beers, they are all a very good quality in my experience. So pretty much just pick a style you like, and I'm sure you will be quite impressed with this brewery. So yeah, that's enough about Hornbreak area just now. If you want to, to go and have a look about and learn more about them, of course, as I say, check out the links in the description below. Okay guys, so let's get on to the tasting section of this video now then. So this one was actually previously called the Fadlagrit Porter, although they have they do seem to have relabeled it recently as the Okavit Porter. I'm not sure exactly when um, when that when they did that, but there are ratings of this one on Rate Beer going back to the year 2010 or so. So this beer has been around for quite a wee while actually. It's just obviously been relabeled and rebranded if you like. But I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. There you can see, quite nicely presented as we would expect from Han Brigeria. It does have a little bit on the side here. It says Porter aged for two months in Akavit casks. Uh, nicely balanced with spicy notes, chocolate and delicious Akavit flavours. So yeah, I do like the artwork that they have on these ones. I like the, the kind of hand print if you like. It's almost like a bit of a, a kind of horror movie. There you can see it on the bottle cap. But that of course is the uh, the symbol of the Hon Brigeria Brewery. Like I said, 7% ABV Imperial Porter. This one aced in Akavit barrels. Got a 99 overall on rate beer and a 94 within the style. So this one should be really quite nice. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer and we'll get on with the tasting then so yeah as you can see a nice smoky opening on this one oh and it smells really quite interesting too uh, you can smell some of the nice chocolatey character coming off this one as you bring it out let's just try and get a little bit more of a head on this guy and there we are that's a nice pour on this but it really does smell kind of sweet but you can pick up a little bit of the kind of herbal sort of spicy thing that you'd expect from the Akavi of course but you know as you'd expect from, uh, from an Imperial Porter. It's poured this dark ebony rosewood colour. There's a solid about two thirds of a finger of a frothy beigey tan head on this one. It's almost a kind of hot chocolate kind of, yeah, I think it's beigey. I think beige is a good, uh, beige tan is a good descriptor for the head on this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it looks really nice, exactly as you'd expect from an Imperial Porter. If I shine it over to the light, it has a little tiny bit of a ruby edge to it, but not too much. It is really quite dark, this one. Obviously, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you're not going to see anything through that just because of how dark the beer is. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. Oh, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so with this one, as you'd expect from the Imperial Porter, it's got a nice roasty black malt base to it. There's a lot of chocolate sweetness on top of this one though. It's more of a milky chocolate, but there are elements of the darker chocolate side of things in there as well. Some brown sugars too, a definite, a definite kind of note of treacle and molasses. Oh, it's the same thing of course, Americans do call it molasses, we call it treacle. But it's got some of these dark roasty toasty brown sugars coming out of it, this one. There's a little bit of a vanilla and almost nutty note to this beer. And mixing in with that, you can smell a little bit of a, an interesting kind of herbal character. I'm not sure if it's cardamom or it comes across as almost a little bit cinnamony or something like that. But like I said, um, Akavit is a, it's a green distilled spirit and they use cardamom, like aniseed and fennel and all these sorts of things. So you do get ones that are kind of, dis that they do flavour with like orange peel and lemon peel and things like that as well. But you can definitely pick up a little bit of that almost herbal character to the, the nose in this. It's mixing in with the kind of woody, almost nutty characters that this beer has. There is a little bit of an almost vanilla quality to it as well. You can definitely pick up a little bit of earthy hop, which is what you'd expect from this style, of course. And there's a wee bit of a red fruity ester. For me, it's coming across as a little bit sharper, this one. It's a, little, a sort of kind of raisiny or plummy note that you're getting out of this one. But it mixes quite well with those sort of dark chocolatey elements that are in the beer too. But overall, it does smell quite nice. But it definitely has a little bit of quirkiness to it because of that herbal quality that you're getting from the, the Akavit barrels, of course. But yeah, let's get stuck into this beer then. So this one is the Akavit Porter, previously known as the Fadlagrit Porter, from Hanbrigeri up in Drammen in Norway. Let's get stuck in. Skar. Ooh. 
that's nice. It's really in the aftertaste, you know, when, when, the, when the liquid is actually on your tongue and just when your mouth is adjusting to this beer, it just comes across as a straight porter, but for me it's in the aftertaste you're starting to get a little bit of these kind of herbal qualities that you expect of the Alcavite. But it's really nice, this is a good beer, I mean I wouldn't expect anything less from Hornbriggery. As I said in my previous experience, they do some pretty damn awesome stuff. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it's actually a very, very smooth porter. I'm finding that with this one. It's really, really quite smooth. So, in the middle of your palate, you know, you're just getting blanketed with this nice smoothness, this lovely smooth, smooth, sweet malty character. As you progress further into the aftertaste, you can feel a little bit of the black malt just start to push its way out with a little bit of that kind of roasty, toasty quality. There's a lot of chocolate. It's almost like a kind of um, milky, but slightly dark chocolate blanket in the middle of your palate there, which is nice. It really is quite nicely done, this beer. I'm not surprised, of course. But yeah, there's some nice brown sugars in there. It's got a little bit, you can pick up the earthy character on this one. In the back corners of the palate, you can pick up that earthy, that earthy hoppy character. As you come further forward, it just smooths out a little bit. And it almost feels just a little bit grassy around the front curve of your palate. I think there's definitely some English hops in here. It does have that typical kind of English hop quality to it. And of course the porter is a style that did, uh, that did originate in London, of course, if I'm not mistaken. But it's a really quite nice beer, this one. I love how the herbal, the, the sort of herbal acavite flavours really come out in the aftertaste of this and they mix quite well with just a little bit of that kind of roasty, toasty black malt that's in this beer. As I say, the hoppy characters are quite interesting. They're only a little bit of herbal character on the sides of your palate too, but you can feel in the middle of your palate these, these acavite flavours just coming out as you progress further and further into the aftertaste of this beer. There's a sort of woody and almost nutty character coming out of this beer which is quite interesting of course and the, the, the Akavit flavours are mixing in with that. I'm not sure if it's cardamom, it's not, I don't think it's really aniseed that's coming out of this one or fennel. It does have a little bit of a kind of cardamom quality to it but it's, it's, it's interesting you know it's, it's a very distinctive herbal flavour that comes out of these. I'm not too well versed in Akavit of course, I've only tried it once or twice. Like I said it did KO me so it's not something I drink too often right enough um, but you can definitely pick up these quite interesting flavours in this one. Yeah, there's almost a little bit, if you go right to the middle of your palate, there's almost a little bit of a kind of vanilla flavour mixing in with that sort of woody, nutty character that this beer has. But it's really nicely done. As I say, most of these Arcavite flavours that you expect from this one come out in the aftertaste. It's almost just a little bit of a it really is a kind of herbal character. It kind of balances well with the hops. Like I said, there's a bit of uh, earthy herbal character that mixes um, that, that mixes well and kind of, back, kind of balances well with the, the herbal character from the Akavit in the middle of your palate. So a little bit of the herbal character is coming from the hops on the side of your tongue, but also some of it's coming from the, the almost malty areas of your palate too, which is quite interesting. There's a little tiny bit of a red fruity character to this one. If you just go behind the front curve of your palate, of course, then you get that little oily bubble where the red fruity esters are coming out. Yeah, sorry about that guys, as you might have heard, there's a few issues with the dogs upstairs that I had to sort out, but as I was saying with this, you're getting a, a little kind of figgy fruit character from this one, if you just go behind that front curve of your palate there, you'll feel that little oily bubble, and to me the red fruity character in this beer is coming out, it's just being a little bit figgy actually. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that it is quite smooth and quite figgy. There maybe is a little tiny bit of an almost raisiny kind of sharpness to it, but mainly it is quite figgy. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would say this guy is mid-bodied. Of course, the clear difference between a porter beer and a stout beer is the mouthfeel. They do tend to use almost, la I think some of them use lager yeasts and pilsner yeasts for the porter style of beer. So it does have a distinctly lighter and wetter mouthfeel than the stouts of course so you can feel that in this beer the carbonation does have a little bit of a prickle to it 
it's quite a wet mouthfeel. It's got a little bit of oily character to it, but mainly it's a sort of wet mouthfeel you're getting from this one. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness. The malt base has a bit of sweetness too, but overall it's an almost herbal character that's dominating the palate in this one for me. And you do have a little bit of a juicy red fruity character to this one as well, but that's quite minimal. Mainly the palate is dominated by a slightly kind of herbal quality to the beer. So overall, you know, this is a really quite interesting beer, this one. If you like herbal qualities to your beer, you're certainly going to enjoy this one. I think if you enjoy Akavit as well, you really are going to enjoy this beer. Like I said, it's mainly in the aftertaste that you start to get these kind of herbal flavours that you expect from Akavit. So it's a really quite quirky beer, this one. I've never had a porter that comes across quite like this. So if you do get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you do. In terms of the porter side of things, if you like your porters to be quite roasty and black malty, I think you're going to enjoy this one. But the herbal character that you're getting from the Akavit barrels in this one really gives the beer a kind of interesting edge if you like but I wouldn't expect anything less than a very high quality beer from Hanbrigeri so if you're interested in Norwegian beers Hanbrigeri of course is a very good place to start and you know the other beers I've had from the, the Alsman Bregery and also the Huefell of course they've been really good as well and like I said this brewery is now in a partnership with them apparently so yeah some interesting times ahead for these guys I'm sure so yeah and um, thank you once again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff Make sure you check out my social media. Do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below if you've tried it before. Always interesting to hear from you guys. Do let me know what your favourite beers from Hornbrig area are actually because I do need to look at what other ones I can review from these guys. This was my fourth review that I've done but all of them have been really quite good. So yeah, thank you once again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Akavik Porter from Hornbrig area in Drammen in southern Norway. A really, really nice beer. A nice imperial porter with a bit of a roasty edge but some really interesting kind of hair qualities from the Akavit barrel aging. Until the next time, slander just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out some of the Hornbrig area beers. Skull.